People who have been catfished, how did you catch on that you were being lied to? About 6 years ago I found out my brother was a catfish. He had been catfishing this young man in the UK whilst being in America. He had fake pictures, a fake name but his real phone number. The guy being catfished, we'll call him Lenny, would repeatedly call my brother and leave messages on our house phone. My brother and Lenny often sent each other packages of sweets. Lenny made the decision to come to America to visit, since he's never been. My brother agreed. On the day Lenny arrived in Texas my brother told him the truth, but never actually met up with Lenny. Lenny tried all week trying to convince my brother to meet him, telling him he just wanted to know who he really was. My brother never showed. Lenny called religiously every day for about a month trying to get my brother back. I think he really loved him. After that I never heard from him again. Or, Lenny wanted to murder the brother. I'd be pretty pissed if I blew international tickets on a fake profile. It was when I was a teenager, not too long after the birth of ICQ. I had met this one person in a chat room, and things started to get more and more personal. Not too long later, they eventually broke down and admitted that they had been lying, and that they weren't a young hot girl but instead a man. The guy seemed really remorseful, and I couldn't bring myself to tell him that I actually wasn't a young hot lesbian either. I don't think anybody was ever what they said they were in those old school chat rooms. Remember, the only people on the internet are men, men pretending to be women, and the cops. Met someone on OkCupid. He was moving from New York City to my city, said he was a surgeon. That was my first red flag. I wondered why a successful surgeon was on a free dating site. We chatted for two weeks, but he didn't want to talk on the phone. Red flag number two. At this point I assume he's a fake. He deleted his profile, saying he couldn't wait to meet me in three weeks when he was scheduled to fly in for a weekend to find a condo. I reverse searched his picture and found another profile, same story, but it said he was moving to Phoenix. Red flag number three. At this point, I know he's fake but now I'm having fun making him think I'm totally hooked. He gave me bad med advice when I sprained my ankle, then told me he had a foot fetish and he would be making sure I would get daily pedicures when I quit my job and move in with him. The weekend he was supposed to fly in, his current almost former boss died and he couldn't make it. I sent him screenshots of his other profile and told him I knew all along and had just been ducking with him. Good times. About 10 years ago, I started chatting with a guy in one of the Yahoo chat rooms. We had only been chatting for a few weeks, when suddenly he disappeared offline for about 2 weeks. I was so worried, but then, his sister contacted me and told me he'd been in a terrible motorcycle accident. He was an ICU, but she kept in touch with me to let me know how he was. After about a month, he got back online and we talked every day. We traded pics and eventually I got on webcam to say hi. He couldn't do the same because of some issues with his computer. We talked like this for nearly 3 years. It was around this time that I realized his sister was actually him. It didn't matter though. I was besotted with him, and I mean totally head over heels. Then one day he just disappeared. His profile was deleted, all his accounts were gone and I have not heard a single word from him since. I still have absolutely no idea who he she really was and it messed me up for a long time. I still think about it at times. I would do anything to know the truth. Oh boy this is gonna be a fun story. I used to be on Omegle, a chat site, a few times when I was 17 or so. Everyone asked age and X, male female, and most of them would disconnect when you said you were a male. So at one moment I told people I was female just to be able to talk to people. Anyway, I connected to a girl and we had a great time together. We chatted for 2 hours or so I believe before we gave each other our Skype address. I had to create mine in a quick hurry, because I didn't have a fake girly Skype address that matched my fake name. We went on to chat almost every day just for fun and even though I knew I was lying to her by being a girl. I still had some fun but I really felt guilty for lying to her, and I knew we couldn't meet in real life, even though we lived close to each other. One day, she confessed that she was lying to me about something, that thing turned out to be that she was a guy as well. We kept contact and we had a great time together still, 
and we actually met each other once. He died two years later though but still, good times. How did he die? Brain cancer. Ouch, seems like a pretty harsh punishment for catfishing. Okay so I actually had this happen to me recently. I was using a dating app and started talking to this girl. She had 5 photos on there, 2 of her and 3 group photos. Nothing surprising for a girl on a dating site. We agreed to grab coffee and I arrived early and sat outside and this girl walks up to me and says hello. Introduced herself as the girl I was meeting but did not look anything like her. Something was familiar about her but I couldn't go and take out my phone to check so I went ahead. We ordered coffee and I thought about making a break for it right there when she went and put sugar in it but decided to stay. Start talking and we pick up on the conversations we were having online, but after about half a cup I had enough and it wasn't going anywhere, so I made up some BS excuse and left. Back in my car I open up my phone to look at her profile again and figure out why she looked familiar. She was in the photos. She was one of the girls in the group, but she was using her friend as the main photo. Very weird. Sad part was is that she wasn't terrible looking. Boring though, but not as good looking as her friend. Girl was probably all kinds of crazy or something. Not me but my father-in-law. He lost his wife 7 years ago and after a while was tired of having an empty house and no one to talk to. He tried online dating but went to a free site and got hooked. A lady who claimed she lived in Chicago started chatting him up. She was an international traveler for business. She had pics and seemed friendly. They chatted for a few weeks and then made plans to meet after she came back from business. He kept telling us some of the details about this amazing lady he met but we didn't want to be too invasive so didn't ask a lot of questions. Luckily for him her trip back was a holiday Thanksgiving weekend and we all happened to be at his house. She was supposed to fly in on Saturday and he kept going to his room in private to chat with her about the details of her trip. On Friday, he came down all sad and said she sent him a heartbreaking message. Her plane got stuck somewhere in Europe due to weather, forget where, and while she was waiting her purse was stolen. She had no phone, no credit cards, no ID, no tickets, etc. She needed him to send money so she could get back home and she was scared and alone in a country she had never visited. If we hadn't been there and he told me some of the details which of course set off my BS alarms, he would have sent her a couple of grand to get back home. I explained to him the concept of catfishing and he didn't believe me at first. I had him ask her for some more details, how is she reaching him with no phone? She claimed she was borrowing laptops at the airport. How come she never talked on the phone? She said she gets very shy on the phone and prefers using the dating site to chat. What is the flight number so we can track it coming to the USA? She provided one but it was bunk and not stuck due to weather. When we called her out on it she tried the emotional tactic and said she was shaking in sadness and betrayal that he couldn't trust her after she gave him her heart. She kept going for emotional responses but stopped responding with any attempts to get actual proof from her. We stopped responding and a day or two later she messaged him one last try and claimed a friend paid for a new ticket for her but she still needed money, a lesser amount, to pay some sort of fine or she would be stuck there and could maybe go to jail. He wouldn't want her to have to go to jail, would he? Yeah, it sucked that it happened cause he's a super trusting guy. Even a few weeks later he wasn't for certain that she wasn't real, despite the whole family telling him it was a scam. I even kind of think he sent her the money in the first part for the original ticket, and the family didn't get involved until the stolen purse part of the scam. Of course, she was most likely a he using stolen pics online. I did an image search on one of the photos but nothing came up. Moral of the story time, if you have anyone over 50 in your life make sure you explain to them about different types of internet scams. Especially if they are into shopping, dating, meeting friends etc. It's a whole different world than what they grew up with and the scammers are getting very good at it. I know a few elderly that have been scammed over the phone, but the internet brings a whole new level of scamming. When I was 17 or so, me and my then kinda sorta online girlfriend used to troll private cyberx chat rooms on AOL. We'd go in there and say something like 12 slash f comma lock, hi everyone. Every single time. Half the room would tell us to get the duck out, we were too young, 
this isn't a place for kids, etc. And every single time, that same half of the room would immediately send us an I am saying something like hey baby, do you like older men? So, we would string them along for a bit and get them all hot and bothered, then we'd suddenly stop and say okay, wait a minute, I have to level with you, then the conversation would go something like, okay, well, we are really two homo exel men, ages 45 and 34 and, we'd explain all these hardcore butt ex sessions we wanted to have with a guy, how we wish he would just please, please let us touch his penis, can we slobber all over his balls while weeping, etc. Since it was 1997, and the internet wasn't the hard, jaded place that it is now, most of these guys would spend the next 15 minutes raging at us, telling us that they'd find us and kill us, all while we would just keep pleading please, please we just want to feel the penis and etc. Until they'd finally leave in utter rage and disgust. To our teenage minds of the time, we thought we were really doing the world a service by trolling pedo scum.